Hey guys, how you doing? I'm a little stressed out this week. I got my Comedy Central recording tomorrow night. I'm just taping my special over the weekend. I'm hoping all of this goes well. I'm hoping that people actually watch these things, sign up for my email list or my text alert to watch these things. Thank you for supporting me. A moment of gratitude I never would have gotten here without you. I'm writing about this in my latest newsletter. Um, so thank you. I really, really appreciate it. And we have a great returning guest on this week, Jess Henderson, a friend of mine, a really talented comedian, runs a show, I think, called Slumber Party at Union Hall every month. I've done it. It's fantastic. Jess gets into healing from a relationship that we heard about on the last episode and bringing what you've learned into your next dating experiences, whether that's meeting someone new that you're casually dating or time alone or your next big relationship. It's a really, really good vulnerable episode but it's also a great comedy episode because Jess is such a talented comedian we also guys we also get into a discussion about some some really positive sexual experiences with bisexuals and we like pondered why they were so hot and I just want all the lesbians and gay men to, out there to know that you guys are awesome at sex too these were just personal opinions. Don't come for me. I'm a lesbian. I think I'm pretty good at sex. But for me, I don't cancel me. Everyone is good at sex and everyone is valid. Tampa, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, upstate New York, Buffalo, Rochester, Austin, Nashville, the Pacific Northland, Vancouver, Portland, and Seattle. So many places. Please just put your zip code in. None of us like this. Oh, and patreon.com slash WHGS. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very proud of us. Enjoy the episode. Listener, this episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket Money, formerly known as True Bill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. I love Rocket Money. I've been using it for years, and it saved me a ton of cash. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash Ashley. That's rocketmoney.com slash Ashley. One more time, that's rocketmoney.com slash Ashley. Listener, this episode is sponsored by OMG Yes. OMGYes.com is a website with findings from the largest research study ever into women's pleasure. In partnership with Kinsey Institute researchers, they asked tens of thousands of women what made their pleasure better solo and with partners. And one thing their research found is how easy it is for us to lose our curiosity about pleasure and intimacy. So many of us think things like, I've already got techniques that work for me, so I'm good. But finding out what works for other people can help you find new things you didn't even know that you or your partner liked. There's always more to explore. I'm always into learning more about my own body and my partner's body. And that's why I love OMG Yes. It really does feel empowering to see these experiences and techniques detailed so openly without any blushing or shame. You know that that's one of the things that you love about this podcast. Why not go try an app that has the same philosophy? What they're doing is long overdue. Go to omgs.com slash gay for a special discount. That's omgyes.com slash gay. Oh, breakup time story. So it was hard for me in intimate um, relationships because I would be so concerned that my concerns would eventually become too much or my needs would become too much so I was not good at like having needs in a relationship mm. it did suck I am grateful and I am respectfully like F you <laughs> <laughs> respectfully <laughs> Well, thanks for thanks for being back. You uh, are now obviously so famous that you need to be incognito during <laughs> yeah the, yeah during the <laughs> yeah the recording. Yeah, I'm really, I just wanted to be like Tim's. Do you know who Tim's is? No. Okay. Well, well, well. Tim's is an artist. She's an amazing artist, and she oh, every picture of her, she's always wearing like what kind like of this. artist? Um, musician? Yeah, musician. Figured, yeah. Um, I don't. I'm really bad at pop culture. Oh, like you could name. I, I think if you name 10 artists like musicians, unless they were all like the biggest, like they have to be like Taylor Swift. 
Oh, you know what I no, mean? Like, same, even, I didn't know who Bad Bunny was, oh. and it was like really embarrassing because if you look he's at my actually, music, he's actually I think technically the biggest artist of all time. He broke the, some record or something. Oh, That's for insane. real? Yeah, yeah. Bad, yeah. Bad Bunny, he is I'm, it. It's like music in particular Amazing. that I'm like under such a rock because I have like the artists I listened to in like 2009. I made like a nostalgia playlist and that's like all I listened to. Like I'm really not up to date on like, because I don't have a radio either. Who? Well, okay. Well, no, <laughs> Relax. Literally on the radio no bit. one else has a radio. <laughs> literally <laughs> we have Spotify and we're clicking on the Discovery playlist. Yeah, yeah, it's. But what are your nostalgia 2009 it's bands? It's like really embarrassing. No, it's not. It's like My Chemical Romance, Blink-182. I definitely, definitely was doing that. I definitely yeah. was doing that. Fall Out Boy. Paramore. Yeah. Don't talk. Paramore is for us, by us. Paramore is for blacks, for black people. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. Paramore is officially Expand. FUBU. Paramore, <laughs> Paramore is FUBU. FUBU, for us, by us. Paramore <laughs> is a part of the black canon. I cannot explain it. If you talk to any alt black kid, we all were listening to Paramore. Paramore is gospel. I love her. I love... I. But there is, there is like a content. So like I, I have, I I have no connection to this community whatsoever. Mm -hmm. To the black community. (laughs) To any, to any black. (laughs) Paramore fans is the black community. We just found that out. Yeah, no. Yes, one in the same. Keep up, keep up. No, no, no. Like the, the black nerdy community. Like, oh. But but it's just like a huge thing. It's like a huge, like, like the, there's a lot of. I think it's just not, unfortunately, not represented. Yeah. Like, there's only, I think a lot of people feel like the black experience is, like, monolithic. Don't say words you can't spell, but I tried it out. And I think I said <laughs> it right. Um, you, did, you did say it right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, wow. Smart. <laughs> um, I... Yeah, there's all different flavors. <laughs> I don't know. There's well, all different course, flavors. Were you a scene kid, like Paramore? I was a scene kid. I, I liked know. AFI. I was going, that's like a deep cut. I was, I like, was I don't going even know if AFI. I've heard of AFI. I AFI think. was like when you were going to Hot Topic and you were getting like alt bands. Were you a Hot Topic kid? Yes, I was okay, a Hot Topic kid. I was a huge Hot Topic kid. Yeah. I was a huge Hot Topic kid and I got like the, okay, I guess slight trigger warning for this for the audience, but I got like those bracelets that like I would cover my bracelets like halfway down my the arm. The jelly ones? Yeah, but I think my parents thought I was like myself because <laughs> you yourself like, are giving blowjobs that was a thing yeah, that, like, yeah the different they, kinds they, they had different s- meaning oh yeah. my god okay so i probably had a reputation i didn't even know because i was wearing yeah. so many bracelets and i was just like aren't you these cool were you watching was it skins or um degrassi that e- explained the bracelet i don't thing. remember but i do think wow. people were probably like yo maddie fucks i had no idea uh, <laughs> yo maddie fucks also these bracelets and a tamagotchi and we, they're like wow I guess please don't talk to me about my tamagotchis oh my what? god i was invested in my tamagotchis i had like five i had we would wear them like on like a lanyard on a keychain and you'd have like a ecosystem of them mm-hmm. and then when they got wi-fi they could like go play with each other but people would carry like mm-hmm. a community Mm-hmm. Of, of Tamagotchi's. Yeah, of just yeah, like yeah. Tamagotchi's and their shit just stacked up around the. But did you hang out with the, <laughs> like, where you went to school? Did you feel like th- you were like part? Because the thing is, like, I. Oh, was I a part? Like, were cool? you with the white nerds or were you with the black okay. nerds? You know what I'm saying? Because so, I feel like where I went to school, the black segregated. nerd was a very isolated experience. Yes. So I um, am a military kid. So I was already isolated because I was like kind of new yeah and when I moved to Florida where we stayed the longest I went to public school for like two weeks and like discovered what the n-word was I had like never heard it oh my my parents were like okay so then they put me (laughs) (laughs) they put my brother and I into like a Christian private school where there's only 18 kids and I was like the only black kid yeah kids yeah Yeah, my in the whole school um in my class yeah my graduating class of 18 yeah, my so I, when I graduated crazy. from from eighth grade, I think there was twelve of us. <gasps> so you were the Whoa. black representation. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. They were like all black people love hot topic. <laughs> yeah, well, they were like, no, unfortunately, they weren't. They were like, you are so weird. You don't act black at all. Right, right. And I That's was like, so okay. <laughs> Wow, 12 <laughs> and then when I got, and then when I got to high school, I just hung out with everybody. Like I, yeah. when I got to high school, I stopped giving a fuck. I was a theater kid. Yeah, first and foremost. Wow, I was also a theater kid. Like this is crazy because I feel like we went through similar. Mm-hmm. I also love that we haven't explained your outfit yet, and I, 
<laughs> no. I, I almost. This is just me now, everybody. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't. Maddie think... decided on their gender, and it's yeah. she/her from now on. That was the last time I will ever use they/them for you. I was in a little silly phase. And, um... Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> oh my god! Such so a funny. silly Billy. It's so, so nice to finally have a woman on this podcast with me. Thank you so. much. Yeah, I mean, God, <laughs> this was in my contract to stay on the podcast. Um... Wow. We just needed more cis representation. Yeah, That's what we more. needed. When I was calling myself they, them, the they was H and M. That's what the they was. <laughs> and now we're here. We've arrived. Wow. So fast. My voice is changing because I'm like wearing this. <laughs> Do you feel like you're pitching up or pitching down? I'm pitching, pitching up a up. little bit. Okay. Although I love that. My, I think I have a kind of deep voice. That yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. You, is this, are you, you doing like, a fake deep voice? I can't, and I was like, I can't say this and make eye contact with you, but you do kind of have like a sexy voice. <laughs> actually, so, actually <laughs> look at the other. <laughs> no, I, no facts. Any, any, per, like any queer person with a deep voice, I'm always like. <laughs> <laughs> I met Sabrina Jalise. Is that how you say her yeah, last yeah, name? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I met her, um, I, she did a show at Union Hall and I did not expect her voice to be so deep. Mm. And I was like. She was like, hey, I'm super. I was like, hi. <laughs> I was like, hi, I'm Jess. <laughs> the musical theater, a theater kid in me was, I, I, and I immediately texted my manager who also represents her. Re- represents oh, her. very cool. And I was like, um, how dare you not tell me she was that hot and had a deep voice. Like you, that's such so let us know. Texting your manager, hey, I see you rep them. Can you help me? them like <laughs> no nope. okay wait hold on no 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 she's think, fully married and nope, I, that's what you said and <laughs> <laughs> she's fully married and they have a beautiful child but she's she's very attractive yeah but but, but there is like there is something funny about something so specific about but why didn't you tell me that sabrina had a deep voice like that, i'm Dude, like your manager and they're on? like well how is this related i know to your how spot unprofessional tonight? how unprofessional <laughs> 10 o'clock at night your client's like hey she could have let me know about a deep voice. <laughs> Don't let me know about any callbacks, Women, uh, any like contracts, deep voice. The P- I I am very lucky. I feel very fortunate to be this type of gay and have my voice. It feels very nice when things line up mm. in that way. Line up yeah. with your brand. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. Uh, 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 like once your cap is on. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. that was a vocal warm up. This of is actually like, what uh, I sound uh, like without the hat off. <laughs> <laughs> when I take exactly. my hat off, I I'm just kind of talk up here. You. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> my, my hat is off. Ew. My oh. hat is off right now. I'm oh sorry. God. I'm sorry, guys. Have we? Can we talk about that? Have we? Have you bedded people that sound like that? <laughs> no, God, no. Okay. No, no. What no. would you do? I'd. I, oh, actually, I guess I've had. Yeah, I'd be lying. I think I've had some some loud. Whenever someone gets loud. Not loud, but like. No, I've not had quite the male gaze of the voice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? But. I when when people get loud, I actually feel quite flattered. I don't know whether or not they're. I'm not. I wasn't talking anything about volume. I'm talking about pitch. And yeah. Mm. A important part of podcast lore is that I'm a gay virgin, so I'm bi, but I've only ever been with men. Which okay, like, wow, 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 I'm wow. so sorry, everybody, and wow, I'll wow, put wow. you know a quarter in the jar for every day I don't eat wow. pussy. But <laughs> wow, 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 I have to. Yeah, yeah, put them back on, definitely. Let let's let's establish who's on. top dog in here. Yeah, I right, you might on. have the dress on, but you're still a virgin. Okay? <laughs> Don't you fucking forget it. You might be hanging out with Nikki Glazer tonight at a fashion show. That's what it is. Oh my <laughs> god, I have to say that. I, I don't think it matters. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, okay, but you fucking you remember that whole time <laughs> you have not eaten <laughs> yet. Oh my god, maybe you will tonight. That would be. I huge. am. Not me circling my mouth after talking <laughs> like, about yeah, it. Like, go on. I was, <laughs> no, hungry. I like part of my magic is is spoken like manifestation. So if I said it, it it could happen very soon. We're gonna eat pussy. Wait, can, are we available to eat pussy soon? Me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's happening. Maddie's calendar is totally clear. Okay. See, that's the thing that people don't. People <laughs> it's are like, oh, happen. you haven't been with women. Is it internalized misogyny? I'm like, no, it's because I don't. F- a lot like I also <laughs> haven't slept with a guy in two years yeah, like yeah, I'm just yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. getting action right yeah, for yeah, me yeah. it's mind your f-ing business are you gonna f- me so no we don't need to talk about what I'm doing <laughs> all right I mind guess your I'll business. just uh... <laughs> mind your business I don't like that I don't like the I I mean I don't know I'm, I'm saying I, we get get a little gatekeepy I yeah, feel like I, in the I, community I, and there are so many other things that we could be dismantling other than like mm, yes. have you eaten 
and can you say you're gay yet? Yes. But we're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having, because we did not do this at all. Oh. We're oh, having, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We're having gay sex with Jess Henderson today. Comedian, Hi. actor, writer. Yep. Just kind of performer in general. Yeah, doing it all. I would say you've got a monthly show at Union Hall here yep. in New York. But you're also like... You're on the verge. It's going to happen any day. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. You've you've worked on a lot of like, I feel like part of comedy is you get a lot of like almost and oh, then yeah. something pops off and you've been like very close, I feel like on several occasions. So yeah, I mean, I did, I did shrill and that was great. And then I did that TV pilot, but it didn't go, but it made me great friends with um, Samantha Irby. Like I fucking love her. Love She's gotten me a lot of opportunities and introduced me to really cool people so yeah yeah you're you're fantastic you're so funny you've done my Thank show you. you've done this podcast before uh-huh. go back and listen to that episode oh fuck i need a pun you're all femme today oh my god and then as always we have the hall monitor to keep me from getting canceled don't you dare try and dress like one of the popular girls <laughs> i know what you are <laughs> <laughs> liar you can't sit with us it's maddie wiener usually maddie. it's like a fake bullying thing but that was like biblically evil that was like <laughs> i see into your soul i know who you are oh wait i didn't say who i am ashley gavin <laughs> cis white gay woman she her pronouns we're gonna come around to you in okay. a moment we'll do maddie in a second sign up for my fucking text list you piece of shit whoa please <laughs> Please. It's, it's like a whole it's like i uh, it's like a dom mommy thing that they're really into no i believe it um do your thing i'm maddie she they still there I under the know. corset i don't know <laughs> uh she they pronouns i don't know gender fluid by something just put it all in a blender that's where i'm at you're looking very renaissance fair today thank you for saying that Okay. If I'm femme, I want it to be like a weird, like a little like woodland yeah, braids. fairy. Do you know what I mean? Braids. Yeah. Like Big old little... turkey leg. What? <laughs> yeah. Turkey, <laughs> a turkey leg like moment. I went to the Renaissance Fair when I was a kid and I got yeah, a headband yeah, that I wore for about 10 years. You don't years. have to I tell was going to ask you if this. you were going to get a, a, if, a headband. I had one and I don't know where it is and I loved it so much. It was, it was from a Renaissance Fair in North Carolina. Anyway, are you I, from North Carolina? Yeah, my mom's from Asheville. No way. Okay. Oh my god, I lived like uh in Chapel Hill, like three hours from there. I know that, and my best I friend went Asheville. to Chapel Hill. Okay. MFA yeah. Chapel Hill. Wow, that's like right where I grew up. Okay, dude, dude, that's crazy. Do you mind introducing yourself in the cellar? oh anything you want them to know about you, basically? Oh, um, I'm Jess. She, they. I love plants. Um, I'm uh all the things that you said earlier. Uh, and that's all. <laughs> All the That's all. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, did you say she, they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure that I was aware of that. Oh, it might be new. It might be new. It could be new. It might be new. I really am about the they right now. I feel like not to like move to Brooklyn and then be like they. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I keep I keep she for, for me because it's I am always going to be a black woman, like no matter mm. what. And that experience is not even the black female experience isn't even part of what I would say is like, we've never fit into what is the definition of femininity anyways. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Um, So it's, it's just, yeah, that's why she, they, that's why I haven't dropped the she because it's like, I'm, will always be a black woman and we'll yeah. always have that yeah. experience. That I makes guess sense I would to me. say more that I like stem or like stud is what I am like becoming and feel in it. Okay. Well, you are in a jumpsuit, so you definitely have the uniform on for sure. I am in a jumpsuit and I did lock my hair. And, and I like the, um, what kind of shells are those? Cowrie. 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 It's like a very much like a, I did. It has like a kind of a, (laughs) 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 so I am half Jamaican and (laughs) I did move to the little Caribbean in Brooklyn and I was like, okay, now it's time to level up. I like the sound effect. I was like, Sorry, I, I've been playing um, Mario on my <laughs> Which Switch. Which one? The 64 one. To, Fuck yeah, dude. I'm doing this thing where I'm like eat, like feeding my inner child. Yeah. I used to sit on Saturdays. Mario 64 is like maybe the best game of I know, all time. It was so, it's way up there. I'm getting, I'm getting a little overwhelmed, so I have to like back out of it sometimes because I never, I never really played it. I would sit you on the young. couch. Yeah, I was young and I would sit on the couch and watch my brother play it. Got it. Mm. So I'm not as like good at it. You're going to um, get good at it. I know. I've been practicing. We, talk, we do a lot of video game talk when you're on. 
Oh, we did Animal Crossing. Talk oh, I'm last still time. on that shit. Do you play Super Monkey Ball on the Switch? No, what's you that? love Super Monkey Ball. I fucking this love is, that. This is this is a gay sex podcast. I thought slash you were gonna say Super Fortnite. I was about to lose my mind. You said what? <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Fortnite. I've I was never about played to Fortnite. Fucking love it. <laughs> Do not like. Fortnite? I hate. Why would I want to be an active shooter? Tell me <laughs> in today's America, like what the fuck is that? I tried to play Fortnite. This, here's my. I, not to be on another rant, I ranted on no, my rant. show about Fortnite, but like, here's the thing about Fortnite that is so fucking offensive. <laughs> the glasses are off. They are off. First of all, there's like a 20 minute before video where you see there's like different worlds and something has happened and they've been split into different leagues and dick lick, dick lick, dick lick, blah, 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 blah. It's irrelevant to the game. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't ever come back up. <laughs> And then they did all these <laughs> graphics to make the nature look amazing and the water look amazing. And so I was trying to like go and look at the trees in the water. And very Animal Crossing. Yeah. As your first problem. Instantly people were shooting at me. <laughs> instantly, pe instantly people were shooting at me. Like you I want a nature moment. Yeah, it's like if you, you're gonna put it there. Let's I thought have some maybe security. in Fortnite you could be a bystander, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll do that. I will like wander the worlds. This these worlds that I learned about for 20 minutes, I'll wander and see different characters, and they can shoot at each other, and then I will be left alone. Yeah, wrong. No, 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 wrong. Have you played Breath of the Wild, Zelda? I. That's a beautiful world where you can so, walk around and just experience the nature. Okay. Also, I can't believe that we're talking about touching grass in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's unpack that. I do go to Prospect Park. It's a game where you can like go to therapy with your dad. It's like with your virtual dad. <laughs> I do want to balance it out by saying I go to Prospect Park every single day because I live across the street and I go to the botanical gardens all the time. Oh, I love botanical gardens. Um, I what was I saying? Oh, Fortnite. Fortnite. Sucks. Breath of the Wild. Oh, Breath of Oh, breakup time story. So I in my um last relationship. A lot of we talked about your last relationship and you guys playing for, um, Animal Crossing together. Right. I don't know if you want this to be your story for today because we're the way the podcast works. I don't know if you recall. I'm going to tell a gay sex story. I'm going to ask you if you've had gay sex this week, and then you can talk about whatever you want. And then we're going to go to Maddie. Yeah, I was just going to say that I put my switch down for a while after we broke up, <laughs> but I have Breath of the Wild and it's unopened, and I'm going to open it. I'm going to get super high, crack it open. Uh, well, let's get into the gay sex. Gay sex. Let's dive into it. I'm going to start a little timer. Oh, that's my phone. 340. Okay. I know. I just, I just <laughs> okay. checking the, you were like, get off my fucking phone. I have all of my, all of the sex that just started pouring in as soon as I put on this outfit. I just, I put on this outfit and people just started sexing me. How mad would you be if you opened my phone and it was all like hinge notifications for women? And I was like, oh, sorry. I didn't mention it. <laughs> yeah. Or all like, like field. <laughs> That face. What? I just realized field is like a, a much more aggressive. Like that was a I like field, heightened that. Field is yeah. I I can't I can't be I that. heightened that. It's is, a, is field a kink app or is it a queer app? It's, it's both. both. It okay. is a place <laughs> It's the <laughs> island of misfit toys, and I say that in a loving way. Like it's like I think it's for everybody who's not looking for a traditional relationship. Yeah, but some people are on there looking for a traditional relationship, but they also want to make sure that they're like compatible. Yeah, yeah, kink -wise, yeah. Kink wise, they're in like yeah. non traditional relationships, like open relationships or polyamory, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff, all that stuff we do as annoying gays. Um, it if uh, I got to be honest, it's it, when I'm on there, I I feel overwhelmed. Um, the thing I don't like about it is that the people that talk to me are too young. You can't like filter them out. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Good Research to know. It. I, or I guess. Like, well, now with, I don't need it. But like with age gap dating, it's like you can like um, there are. Uh, uh, Did you see me open my mouth to drink from the mic? Because <laughs> I, I had picked up the cup. I literally went. <laughs> I mean, wow, I really hope you caught that. Uh, yeah, I was, well, we started getting on the track of bisexual. I'm going to, this is episode. Oh yeah, I'm very So this episode to... is like going to be, people are going to come for me on this. The lesbians are going to be f***ing pissed at me. And I want to, the, les the lesbians. <laughs> I genuinely have had better sexual experiences with people who are pan or bisexual or just queer rather than like lesbian, lesbian. Because I've always, here's, I have a problematic theory. The theory itself is not problematic. Okay, let's okay, say I, for the time being, let's say for the time being, we're in a safe space we're to in a work safe space. out this idea. Yes. Thank you, Jess. Okay. We're working on a theory here. Okay. We have a lot of data. Okay. Between the two of us and kind of. 
And <laughs> what do you, I, you know, laugh okay. out loud or the people at home are going to be like, yeah, so I was laughing. Bullying I was laughing. I was Maddie. Laughing. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'm messing around. I don't even know if people, listener, I hope in. everyone gets that, that I'm like fine with it. Like, I think it's very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> So, you know, because I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like I've slept with a lot of people. I don't know what's a lot, but okay. I've slept with oh, what I, feels like a fair amount of nothing. Yeah. Not bad, not like Wilt Chamberlain levels, you know? What's Wilt Chamberlain levels? Wilt Chamberlain is a basketball player, like known. There's no way it's true. Oh, he said like, it was like thousands, thousands of women. Thousands of that women. Guy? Yeah. Okay. He said he slept with thousands of women, which the math was like. Wow. It was like really like not. Three girls a day or something. From way back. Sense. It's like he, he played in like the 70s. Yikes. Three women a day. I'm kind of pulling that out of my ass, but it was something where it was like. It, it, if you looked into it, you'd be like, Will Chamberlain, come okay. on. You are like one of the greatest basketball players of all time. You're clearly like a genius. Like you don't have to like flex like that. Thousands Yuck. is crazy. Yeah. That doesn't even seem. I don't think it's possible. Um, anyway. Anyway, uh, and I just have better experience with bisexual women. And I okay. have a theory. Mm -hmm. Now, look, we live in a society. Good start. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't always, there are, are some problematic systems in place, okay? I don't a agree. Lot, yeah. I don't agree with them. Yeah. But some shit happens to people. Yeah. And it informs the way that we bang. Oh, you're saying that there's a trauma difference? When I have sex with women who've had a lot of sex with men or regular sex with men, they approach sex differently mm -hmm. than like lesbians who have not really had sex with men. What is and the difference? what's the difference? Is I this think, where you're worried about being problematic? Yeah. Okay. I think it's the male gaze. I, I think it's like women who f men, they know the men are dumb. And they do their little, they do their feminine thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's they, part they of the reason I'm scared to sleep with a woman because I know that's not going to work. Oh, They're it gonna fucking works, dude. My, oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. No, this is what, this is what I was saying. Maybe, so this is how it, this is how we reverse back out of it being problematic. Is that it's not <laughs> about the ways that women who sleep with men are like able to seduce a male gaze. It's about there is more of a willingness to honor and see your masculine side mm. and appeal to your masculine wow. side, which Dude, might not thank be. Thank you for saving the. You got to get Whoa. on this level. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna take it a totally other direction. Yeah, though. I think <laughs> that's funny, but not. Good. I would say go that the funny, like go the funny direction. I was gonna say I'm saying this as someone who <laughs> men. <laughs> I'm joking. Also, yes, yes, yeah. yes. But there is like a if you every time you a man, maybe not when you're in a loving relationship. Like, I feel very safe in those. But if you're, like, having a one-night stand, there is a thing in the back of your mind of, like, hope I don't die. Like, you got to so good because your life is on the line. So it's, yeah. like, yeah, the people who best are the ones who with a gun to their head every time. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, like, wow, I that is. my way out of a murder, dude. But I think, I think the biggest thing, too. Like, of course. Like, I mean, that is that is valid, too. That is valid, too. Like, I, I think we get stuck in trying to label everything as, like, good and bad. And it really is You're both. You're so right. You're so right. It really right. is both. And I, I'm not saying that lesbians can't honor, like, oh. a mas masculinity. But I, yeah, I, from what the, what you were specifically describing that you like about it, I'm like, yeah. that's, like, mm. somebody really. I will say, I have no practice in it. Mm -hmm. I cannot do it. And if someone wanted me to them that way i would have to work on it mm -hmm. like i would have to actively you what way like if they wanted me to honor their masculinity what do you mean <laughs> oh like if i if i i i don't even i what can't. do you mean oh if you were the seducer yeah if i was like the the femi. oh if you were like jiffa yeah <laughs> dude i'm so horny for that part of aladdin <laughs> i was so horny for that part of aladdin too yeah that one I was all, I was yeah. horny but I was also like Aladdin <laughs> like no this is like this is I don't give a fuck about him I was like bitch leave his ass take them hot ass animals and go <laughs> <laughs> not me being attracted to the animals but yeah <laughs> the animals are attractive it's a whole thing Emma yeah, Wilman Disney I, does sexy animals do you know <laughs> do you know Emma Wilman yes yeah she has yes. a hilarious joke about her first crush being Nala <laughs> <laughs> and being she's so 
so funny. funny. Go if you're li- we must credit Emma Wilmer for this. It's an incredible joke. Go follow Emma right now if you're laughing at this. Oh my god, that's she, so funny. She's done the podcast a few times, but she's like, I was more embarrassed that it was a girl than that it was a lion. <laughs> 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 it's such a good joke. It's so fantastic. No, and I so relatable. Him. So relatable. There was something it's about so Nala's funny. eyes for me too that I was like, what's good? <laughs> yeah, that was good. Oh God. Yeah. Well, going back into it. Uh, like, yeah, I just like, there's like a certain, and I have what I would describe as boy brain when it comes to sex. Every woman that I've ever had sex with has noted it to me. <laughs> What's boy brain? I have a specific dumb face <laughs> <laughs> that I make that I know that I can see the woman seeing it because she looks so self-satisfied that she was able to mind control me with like her body and femininity. That's so I just funny. I go into a trance like okay. like I you know yeah, what's yeah, the yeah. face? I can't do the face on the podcast. Yeah, can't yeah, I yeah. have some privacy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, yeah. All right. It's like very it's like a very ble- it's like a very I don't even know if I can get there. You you go from like ha <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's quick. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's yeah. like when a cartoon character in a cartoon sees a cake. And yeah. then, <laughs> And they're like behind the glass, like looking at the cake. Yeah. You know, that's yeah, yeah, how yeah, I would yeah. describe it. And I've not that it's exclusive, but I've noticed that, you know, gender roles, whatever, take the actual genitalia and bodies out of it. I'm just attracted to that feminine energy. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm. I just find it like so. And they have mind control. Women have mind control. <laughs> they do. They look at you in this very specific way. And then, and then they, they catch you. They, they they get you to do the thing. That okay, they... wow. That's. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's so funny. I don't know. I'm more of a the mind. Like once I get to know you. Yeah, what... yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Like that's what gets you interested in somebody. And that's what gets me. <laughs> me too. Somebody. And I'm like, not to be like, oh, I'm a sapiosexual, but I'm like, genuinely, <laughs> if somebody is like smart and funny and I get to know them really well, yeah. that's the only way that I'm like really into them. And For I'm sure. also physically attracted to them. For yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely gone on dates with physically attractive people that I was like, been like, there is nothing. Me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, oh I, I want so badly to be attracted to you. I think I've told this story on the podcast. Maybe I haven't, but I was at a comedy club in Connecticut. This is a long time ago. And this girl came, watched a comedy show, and I was talking to her before my set and all the guys at the show it was like i was oh, i was featuring and the host and the the guest spot guys were like that girl is f-ing hot dude she's so hot and i was like i know she's very attractive but i can't get there because like yeah she's just a little bit of uh, odd yeah and we're, <laughs> and we're not connected yeah yeah and yeah she had a lot of turquoise jewelry yeah see you f-ing <laughs> know. that's that is such a now listener if you're rocking some turquoise jewelry, I'm not saying you're exactly like this person, but f- someone who cares because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, that's me. Yikes! <laughs> turquoise leading with the hips, like a lot of a lot of tur- a lot of turquoise, like like leaning. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? When they, it's like you're gonna break in half if you stand like that when the, <laughs> their hips are forward. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think I stand like that, dude. <laughs> I, I think I have like my posture is so like tilted. It's it's awful. Oh I've been my working God. on it. Turquoise. You let me know if I'm doing that. Though. Okay, I will. But the guys were like, dude, just have sex with her. Like, she's into you. Like, just have sex with her. I was like, yeah, I really can't. I, I can't cannot. do that. I can't do that. I tried or I have tried like every now and then I'll be like, yeah, I'm just going to just to. And it's usually only good like once or twice. And then the third time it's like. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like. Mm, no, for me, it's usually at, it's like that the post nut clarity is usually like when I'm when the sex is done, I'm like, ah, ah, please don't speak to me. Please, yeah. please, please, please. I'm also like dirty talk is so important to me. And I'm like, if you're not a good writer, we can't <laughs> get along. What's the worst dirty talk you've had? Oh, my God. That's a good question. I don't No one's ever said anything weird to me. But sometimes it's just, you know what really bothers me? There's a pet peeve of mine when I can tell that it's like a stock line. And I feel that way in dirty talk or if it's just flirting, it's like, I want to feel like you're actually talking to me organically and like, let's have a real conversation. Like if this is just a line you could say to a girl, I feel like we're disassociating and not even talking to each other. Does that make sense? I was just going to say I have stock lines. <laughs> in defense of stock lines. 
But also, I think some people like that and think it's cute. I think for me, I just... Uh, no. <laughs> they think it's cute. No one... Uh, the thing about stock lines is when you're doing dirty talk, you have to be... I have a joke about this. You have to be in the moment. You have to be in a flow state. You need yeah. to be very zen. You, got, you can't yeah. be thinking about what you're going to say. It has to flow out of you organically. So if you have things that you've rehearsed that you feel good about and you like saying, I think that that's totally fine as long as you mean them yes. in yes. the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I mean what I say, but I do have like... Things that I like to say. Everyone's okay, asking if that you too. like that, and I've been with guys who have that too. But it's yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, but it's like, yeah. You, if you can tell someone doesn't mean it, or you can tell it's just like, and that hasn't really happened. If you don't mean to it, me. I'd rather you just be quiet. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, just be quiet. But you want someone to be like, like good girl, Madeline Weena. <laughs> what, is good, what is good dirty talk? Because I feel like actually Emma Wellman loves dirty talk. And like practice. Yes, she had. She oh, her bit about that is amazing. Too. Yeah, the Craigslist. Yeah, I I feel like I need to practice, and I don't know. So let's hear it. Me? Yeah. What's good dirty talk? Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh oh me oh my. Um, something I would say or something someone would say to me. Both. Hmm. I. You want me to. You want me, or do you feel embarrassed? I'm a little embarrassed. It's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, okay. No, wait, it, are you also, sometimes I feel like people are like, I love dirty talk. I love dirty talk. And they don't talk. But then when I start they to dirty talk. listen. Exactly. No, I talk. Okay. Ooh, I just remembered something someone said. Okay, yeah, <laughs> tell us. Tell us. <laughs> Not the, ooh. ooh. Okay, tell well, us. Well, we were, no, he, he you want we us to were close in our eyes. I feel like it was like private and it's not my place oh, to share. But if was, you uh, say it, he'll know it, Tim. Yeah. I would like to know off the. I'll tell podcast. you off. I'll tell you off, Mike. We'll, we'll hear off, Mike. Can you give us a category? Uh, good, awesome, hot, good. <laughs> oh fuck! No, I'm really trying to like. It's so weird because it involves another person. You know what I mean? That I don't want to. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, share anybody's business, but um, I think that's. I know it's fair. very. Maddie's very honorable on the podcast. I love that. I have absolutely no. <laughs> I say like you're doing like a good job. No, I think that's kind of hot. Okay. Especially or like in like, like, like a, a very girl. like, oh my, oh, good girl. Girls love good girl. Okay. People love yeah, that's crazy. Good, good girl and good boy. And um, I've heard for non-binary people, some people like good baby, but I'm not sure whether or not that's, I have a whole joke about this. <laughs> um, I accidentally said good person in bed is what the joke, <laughs> that's just a joke. That didn't actually happen. Okay. I love that. Um, but uh, all right, let's go. Let's go over to Jess. That's my gay side. The, the bisexual talk, lesbians out there. I know you f real good. This is just a trend. It's not. It's not monolithic. Okay, I know some of you have that that power that I'm discussing. But this is just something that I have noticed in my very non scientific survey of having sex with people. Uh, uh, try it for 30 days. It's a scam. It's a fucking scam. You know you're going to forget. You're going to forget, listener. Don't waste your money paying for subscriptions that you don't use, you forgot about, and you're paying for it every single month. You got to get Rocket Money because it's going to save you that cash. Rocket Money, formerly known as True Bill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they've forgotten about, like that streaming service you bought just to watch that one show because it had that one lesbian scene in it. You know what I'm talking about. Or that free trial that you never even used. Okay, I've been using Rocket Money for years. It is the best for finding the subscriptions that I forgot about. It saved me so much money. I absolutely love it. Stop throwing away your money. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash Ashley. That's rocketmoney.com slash Ashley. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash Ashley. Jess, did you have gay sex this week? Uh, it's Monday. <laughs> you can, With, a week, honestly. Oh, okay, okay, okay. A yes. week. You did, I, had to, I had recently, yes. Were you not expecting that? No, because you said, oh, it's Monday. So I was like, you well, today? The, no, I didn't f today. I f***ed last, when did I? On Friday? Over the weekend. Great. Yeah. Great. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, you so much. You do not have to discuss that. 
Mm -hmm. only if you want to. Mm -hmm. What were we talking about before that we wanted to come back to? I felt like you got out of a relationship. Oh, yeah, yeah, Last yeah. time you were here, you were like a yeah, long distance, very oh, long yeah, relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? That yeah. must have really sucked. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it did. It did suck. But I also am like, I am grateful and I am respectfully like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> respectfully. <laughs> With a lot of love. <laughs> and I am grateful, but I am like, I was not as emotionally intelligent as I am. Well, I I did a lot of work on myself in that relationship. And especially I am not like a very good at like owning my feelings and expressing them. And that relationship I'm shocked by that. Yeah. Well, I in in intimate, it was hard for me in intimate um, relationships because I would be so, I guess, codependent or like concerned that my, concerns would eventually become too much or my needs would become too much. I relate to that so get, hard. So I was not good at like having needs in a relationship. Mm. And that past relationship taught me a lot about having needs and also taught me a lot about what it looks like when your needs are never centered. Yeah. And it's like a lot about what the other person wants and how the other person feels. And I think us air signs do this a lot um, because it's easy for us to disassociate. We can like live inside a relationship and also inside of our minds and be okay and be like, it's fine. Cause like, I know what it is and it, that feels safe. Um, and that relationship forced me to be like, to start saying um, my needs and then seeing how they couldn't be met was hard, but like, yeah, like a huge growth thing. And also when I look at, pictures of myself then and I see where like what I look like now it's not even like oh I'm better looking it's just I see myself now when Mm. I look at myself Mm. and before I I felt like there was like the like a film over me like I couldn't Mm. I couldn't get to where I needed to go because there was I knew deep down that this person actually did not like who I was wow I felt that before yeah I felt that on several occasions yeah it's a horrible yeah feeling yeah but and in and, and I was like stuck with like I don't think this person actually likes who I am and I am still willing to work on the relationship and yeah. I'm actually having a really hard time letting go even though I know it's like you don't fucking like me <laughs> like sometimes there would be moments where I'd be like we you know when you you discuss like the issues that you have yeah and there would be moments where I'd be like I, I understand what you're saying, but like, do you like me? Like I have ADHD. Like I'm going to sometimes like interrupt you mid sentence, especially because I love you and I'm excited you're about excited. what you're saying. Yes. And I'm instantly thinking about like this information dump I'm going to give you. Like I can, I can temper that and I can hold that. And I understand that's who I am, but I can't like, there's not a lack of love because I'm unable to change that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. I don't know if this is your same experience with this, but like I relate to a lot of what you said. And then Uh I find sometimes that it's like addictive when you're like, oh, I know the person that this person would like me to be. And it's almost a a task I can accomplish of trying to become that person. Because if you really try to be yourself, it's like scary and open ended. And what I know, but if there's a perfect box for you to fill, it's like a fucked up fun mission to try to be there's safety in understanding somebody like Mm. even though you're continuously disappointed or like feel unseen i felt safe in being like well i know what it is Mm. i know what it is versus having to be vulnerable and be seen more and more by someone and then you're like more and more exposed and then there's that chance at any moment because it's life and that's consent like at any point somebody can walk away Mm. and it feels better if that you can like villainize that person when they walk away or you can be like, Oh, I was never really myself. Like once they walk away Mm. and I was kind of in that. Yeah. It was, it was a huge, 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 beautifully disgusting, painful lesson that I'm ultimately grateful for. Sometimes you have to hit a form of rock bottom in order to make the changes to have a really super healthy relationship. I know that's been true for me. Yeah. But Man, I'm sorry you yeah. you were I'm, going I'm, through it. I am good. I'm really good. I would say, and that's why I say I'm grateful. Like I look back on it and I'm like, thank God. 
Can I ask you also to speak to your point, the like the addictive nature for me, the addictive nature is like, oh, if we just fix this one thing. Mm. Oh, if we're oh, just. Oh, that was me totally. Yeah. That was me totally. And I'm like a wordsmith, right? So like we can talk our way through. Yeah. And even now that's been my lesson is that like when I feel that need to like talk somebody into something, I'm like, no, because I know what this is. And either you want it or you don't. And I'm going to like speak clearly on my feelings and like my needs. But yeah, I feel like in my relationships, especially when I was in my closeted one, I was like, oh, if I just can wait, if I can just get through or make her feel comfortable enough to come out of the closet. Yeah. Then it'll be fine and we'll come yeah. out and it'll it'll be great. And yeah. like, there's no if you're in a relationship, of course, you're going to have things that you work on together mm-hmm. or like moments of struggle. Yeah. Uh, but th- it should never feel like if only this for the relationship to work. It should yeah. not. That is a I don't believe in like categorical red flags, but that if it feels like you're always chasing some goal in a relationship, the relationship is not functioning. Yeah. And the the thing that really shook me were like my encounters after the breakup. Yeah. And then meeting people who I was really compatible with. I was like, oh, it could have been this this whole time. Yeah. Yeah, Like I'm like, oh, my God. I remember there was this one. Um woman that I was sleeping with I literally said like oh I like explained why I had changed the subject I was like I don't anything and I'm just excited and like blah 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 she's like it's okay like I I know what you're talking about and I was like I know the interruption thing is (laughs) you said you're an army brat but where did you primarily grow up uh Florida Okay. So ain't nobody supporting that in Florida. I don't know what the interruption thing is like there, but I know in the North, like here in New York, we're constant. it's like a cultural thing. We constantly interrupt each other. I also noticed the difference between Jewish people and like, it's like, it is such like a my Jewish mom thing. is like, like Christian Midwest and like, and my dad is from a Jewish family and whoever, you know, when we went to Thanksgiving at one or the other, it is like, world's different and i'm very much on the like interrupting train blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah and if you're pe- around people who don't do that i feel rude i feel like yes a, you know what i mean i feel like i'm like walking through yeah. like a china shop interrupting like, is almost a way to show that you're engaged yeah in, yeah in the culture that we're talking yeah. about but in my relationships it was a huge thing with this girl that i dated from the south yeah it was like a really yeah we had i know it sounds like such a small thing but we had such a difficult time I like worked so hard on it. And I would, I remember just like sitting there, sitting, like counting, being like, <laughs> she has not spoken for a few sentences of seconds. And then I'd, I would come in and she'd be like, I wasn't f- done. And I was like, God fucking damn it. That's the other fuck, thing. Yeah. Fuck. If the other person isn't interrupting and cutting off too, then it's really easy to monopolize the conversation without meaning to. Yeah. Right. Because you, you're like, you don't have a different set yeah. of social yeah. views. Well, it became a thing of like, oh, you don't find me interesting. And I was like, well, maybe. <laughs> maybe this is the eighth time that you've decided to circle the drain on an issue that's non-existent because you've gone <laughs> off and upset yourself in the corner and I wasn't there. Right, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. But <laughs> like, the point is neither one of us was correct, I don't yeah, think, yeah, with, with exactly. that particular issue. What was actually happening is that we couldn't communicate in other ways. And so I think what the interruption was actually about was that we were in very different life places with our careers and stuff like that and mm-hmm. our sexual identity. She was, like, in the closet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, when I interrupted, it felt like a smush on yeah. her. On mm-hmm. her. Yeah. And, I, and you know what I mean? Like, our neuroses come in. There's so much narrative. We build so many narratives yeah. back here yeah. that when we're in the fight and we're talking about interruptions... It's like a thousand other things. Yeah. yeah. I think ultimately for me it was I was so um concerned about mood and like having yes, to deal yeah. with like a bad mood. So I was always interrupting almost to like control the conversation mm. and steer like to make sure they didn't get upset, to make sure that like, oh, I can see that you're kind of like not agreeing with my opinion. So let me like interrupt and like shift us back on track. Cause there would be like mood switches that are normal but for me were like mm. I, I always felt like oh my god I was just like having a simple conversation and now you're upset because you've been like well if that means this then this means that and that means this and that but you know yeah, yeah how yeah, we yeah, totally tell totally. ourselves narratives. narratives yeah yeah 
for sure. It's really interesting though, because now that you're saying that, I'm like, oh, I might do that. <laughs> I, do I might do that, interrupting to keep the mood. And it's weird because it, I think it's easy to think that it comes from a place of like, I want this person to feel good and I don't want to go to a bad place. But it actually kind of ends up being like, at least for me, I'm like, oh, I think I sometimes out of fear don't have quite the space to like hold people's negative emotions, which like in a relationship, right? they need to be able to like talk about it. And like, I don't know, hearing right. you say that, I was like, oh, I've never Absolutely. heard that articulated, but I totally think I do that. Absolutely. And it ends up being like you, mon- you metabolize into what your worst fear is, which is like, being an unsupportive partner yeah. mm. or like being a selfish partner. Well, you can be in a relationship where like, this is what I've learned with my, with my uh, current, my main main. I don't know what order these are coming, coming out in, mm-hmm. but like what I learned from her. Well, the ex- interruption thing is a great example. Like we, we were talking about it yesterday. I was like, every now and then I'll ask her, oh, am I supporting you? Like, do you feel like good about like, is there anything I can change? She was like, no, not really. I was like, I'm, I'm, the interruption thing I want to be better about. She was like, yeah, I know. But like, you always circle back to what I was saying. And I know you're just engaged. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And then you're fucking choked. <laughs> you, what's that? And then you're fucking choked. You're like, <laughs> right. Seen. Because you're with, you're with a person that is actually compatible, compatible with you. And when you're not compatible with someone, then both of you start going down the lanes of your neuroses. Mm. One of you turns into your mom. One of, one of you, the other one yeah. turns into their dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like you do become the worst version of yourself. Yeah. And then I don't know for you guys, but like when I turn into the worst version of myself in a relationship, I blame me. I don't blame the other person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And there's no point in really blaming anybody. You just got to get out of the relationship. But like I'll put myself in a situation where I can be critical of myself. After a breakup? No, like in a relationship that's not working. Like what you were saying, you're almost like manifesting. Yeah. You're creating an environment for oh, dysfunction I, and toxicity. Mm. And of course, the the bad version of you is going to be the one that you fear the most because right. that's the one that you right. were raised to fear. I don't know if this yes. is making sense. No, it's making sense. I I became hypercritical of myself and and started I was like in in ten, like going to therapy twice a week and just felt like, well, I can therapize myself into a version of this, of the partner that this person wants. And in doing the therapy, I just became more and more myself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good what, therapy. Yeah. And what ev- eventually ended up happening was like the realization that, like, yeah, it's not there for either of us. Yeah. Thank you for being so vulnerable. Of course. That was of like course. a really good, intense. We're almost exactly at 15. That was a really good, intense. Yeah. I try. I try. Listener, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to come see me live. Okay. It, it's a really great way to just support the whole team and everything that we do here. So get on my text list or my email list. It's international, both of them. AshleyGavin.com. Go sign up and I'll literally text you when I'm in your area. So you don't have to hear all these plugs. You can skip right by them. Don't even worry about your city. Just get on one of those two things and I will let you know. Okay. Cause there's a lot of cities coming and I just remaking this announcement over and over again. We all think it's annoying. You do. I do get on the text list. You piece of shit. Mood shift. Mood shift. Unless you've got something. No, it's a mood shift. <laughs> Maddie's sharing corner this week is a bit of a mood shift. All right, what's going on? Maddie, do you have gay sex this week? I did not have gay sex this week. Shocker. Womp womp. No soundboard today. But I know there's a misleading stain on my skirt, but I did not have gay sex this week. This is from <laughs> a pizza. Um, <laughs> just from some pizza. <laughs> I had this outfit for one day. There's already a pizza stain on it. Anyway. <laughs> I need pizza. I'm not starving. There's a Joe's down the street. Oh, okay. We went to a Super Bowl party. Oh, Maddie's sharing corner. Maddie's sharing corner. Maddie's sharing corner. We do need a little like graphic with a yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we did go to a Super Bowl party. And the Rihanna halftime show. Oof. Huge. When she lifted, oh my God. Up, she lifted up her butt. Did you catch that? No, where? Mm, Rihanna I lifted did. up her I butt did. a little bit. We yeah, lifted I watched butt. it twice. Woo! Wait, like with her hands or like yeah. she got surgery? She like, no, <laughs> with her hand. She was like, her butt was facing camera and she was like looking back and then oh, she kind of grabbed that. her butt and lifted it a little That's bit. Awesome. She basically let us know that it's still good. Yeah. <laughs> it's still good. It was, 
I liked that. She part. is maybe the most gorgeous woman who's she's she affected Sunday school sales. So I know. <laughs> Yeah, we <laughs> wait. What? Yeah, usually I'll sell like a hundred tickets by Friday. We were texting. I was looking at the sales. I was like, "Why have we only sold forty tickets?" Can I share oh. the text? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were texting. And I was like, I think "Maybe the Super Bowl," and you were like, "There's no way that's it." And then I was like, "Rihanna's the halftime show." And you were like, "Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah," and I was oh, fully yeah, yeah, like, yeah yeah. "Yeah, yeah." Oh yeah, I fully was like, every time it wasn't Rihanna. Like, AK the game. I was like, what's <laughs> what's all this? It's like, what is all this? I Who's need... opening for Rihanna right now? Yeah, I, I <laughs> literally Chiefs was like, Eagles. what oh, track is it? What is this? <laughs> everyone was... left the Super Bowl party at the halftime. Yeah, everyone left when Rihanna yeah, was done. Literally, everyone got up and walked out. Yeah. I did not give a fuck. I left the person's house that I was watching. I was like, goodbye. And it was a good game, too. Yeah, I don't I'm even sure. like football. I heard in the streets people in their houses shouting. I was like, wow, it seems intense. <laughs> I saw what I needed to see. <laughs> But go on. Sharing corner. Sorry. I oh, no, it's okay. So that that was huge. And then I unread it. I was thinking about it the whole time and somebody posted it. The Tom Holland lip sync battle. Have we seen it? No. You haven't seen Have you seen it? I have not. Dude. Should we live? Oh, my. Should we live react? God, can we? Live yeah. react? Because it's Tom Holland lip syncing. I don't want to say anything else. It's. Bring it Incredible. Up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Put we it on the it. table and we'll all watch it. Mm. This is, I'm so excited I get to see y'all's reactions to this. Oh, how thoughtful that you put your phone on airplane mode. I appreciate that. Oh, I do Maddie. it every time. Um, you are such an excellent co host. And I'm going to take oh. this time. Please go follow Maddie. Come oh, on, guys. Thanks. Follow, sign up for their text alerts. Um, you know, I don't know. Thank you. I don't know when they're coming to your town, but I know they've got an email set up for that and they're doing some essays and things like that. I have a zine on Substack. <laughs> I decided that's the easiest thing to call it. And go follow Jess as well, obviously. Oh, yes, please. Okay. And what is your Instagram? Embrace mess. Okay. Are we ready? Live reaction to Tom Holland lip sync battle, which I think a lot of people have probably seen because it really went so, so, so viral. But I'm curious if people are, I don't know where people are at with it. Okay. It was during promo for Spider Man, which is for context. It's Zendaya did one. And then I think he goes, and they're, like, battling each other. They're battling. Okay. 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 And so then okay. this is Tom Holland's turn. Okay. Is it Umbrella? It's got to be. I have to admit, I still don't understand who Tom Holland is. <laughs> Queer people love Tom Holland. Okay. I think you're about to get a glimpse into that as to why. <gasps> <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that Tom Holland was so, like, I didn't know that he did drag. Like, it's just, it's a kind of an amazing drag performance. Yeah. Holy shit. And he's like, a oh my God. Seriously well-trained dancer. Yeah. For people so, listening at home, he just rode the shit out of the umbrella between his legs. And he looks, oh my <laughs> I like this is definitely like one of those things where I'm like, I don't know that I need to see this because I've like figured out my sexuality and stuff like that. So like this is like a, a wrench in the gears that Isn't I Isn't it really upsetting? Well, this is why I think everybody's bi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause I'd have to get into that. Are we capturing live this Ashley Gavin's so... first attracted attraction to oh, me? Well, I'm not attracted. I'm like not attracted to him. But, like, the things that he's doing, I would love, yeah. like, a uh, bi girl in my bedroom to do. <laughs> really? I'm, I think he, I'm into it. Wow. I'm also into, where did Umbrella, I feel like he lost a prop. Oh, no, he didn't. He's just doing, okay. Well, this is, thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's almost over. It is an incredible finale. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just feel like you need to see it. No, 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 for sure. Sorry, I forgot we're on a podcast. No, I was no, no. hypnotized. I was we'll like, I we'll been edit it so that it's quick <laughs> and just like the highlights. And I don't think that we can have umbrella, umbrella in it. So we're going to have to figure that out. Well, Isn't that wild? That's incredible. Though? That's really Anyways, incredible. So I watched that, uh, not kidding, five times on the subway ride over here. <laughs> whoa. Whoa, whoa, But what whoa, does that whoa, have whoa. to do with the Super Bowl party? Just oh, Rihanna. Rihanna. Yeah, Rihanna. And there's a, uh, articles that were like, people thought, Rihanna was going to bring out Tom Holland. And I was like, no, we didn't. Nobody thought that. But it would have been cool. That video wow. is really that important. That is the equivalent of what's-his-face Harry Styles being like, this never happens to people like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why would we think that she's going to bring out a white 
<laughs> during Black History Month. And she's Rihanna. Yeah, she doesn't need anyone else For there. seven years, we've been waiting for her to fart in our direction. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's what she was doing when she grabbed her ass. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> put it in my mouth. Yeah, okay. Put fart Rihanna's in mouth. not. Okay. Uh, relax, Jess. It's okay. Back on track. No, no, no. I'm, I'm done. You can rant as much as you I want. I ranted. Ooh, yeah. That, that video, though, is such an important gender uh, text, if you will. <laughs> Go on. Is that like, that like, that's okay. I've said this in a previous episode, but like being a boy in a girl way and being a boy in a girl way, like that's very much like being a boy in a girl way where I'm like, that's what I want to have. Like, I want to be like kind of ripped. That's being a boy in a girl way. I think so. Go where on. He, I know, I know what you mean. Do you know where it's like, he's, he's ripped. He's tall. He's got the muscles. He's got like a masculine. Yes. He's masculine. Yes. Figure. But he's in like a corset and he's dancing. And it's like, that seems so fun to me. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to get fucking muscles, not big, but like lean, like a masculine body, but then do weird little femme shit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Totally. That video like reprogrammed my brain and as you, to like what gender is. Well, it's an expression. <laughs> yeah. You can land, you can land wherever you want in the expression. And that was weird to me too. That's like, oh, I can like want to be more masculine physically and also still want to be maybe even more, more femme. femme presenting than I am right yes. now. Like, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. I, that's why I was like, oh, maybe I'm not queer because I don't want to be like totally masculine. And it's like, no, no, it's you can, there can be so many layers and mix and match. That's part yeah. of why it's hard to figure it out. Yeah. Especially right. when you have sexuality playing into it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a great sharing corner. Oh, thank you. And thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> My sharing corner is turning into a piece of media. I want to look like this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to create a vision board by the end of your time I'm here. slowly creating a vision board. Oh my God, Maddie, we have to have a vision board a for gender you up vision on the board? wall. That would be incredible. Oh my God, Maddie's gender vision board. <laughs> That's, That's so amazing. Wouldn't that be so great? Yeah, let's Listeners, do it. send things in. You don't read your DMs, right? I try to. No, I will try to. Sorry, I'm send bad about it. Send but... in things that we can print out and pin onto Maddie's vision board and we can hang it here in the on the we're having gay sex That's wall. That's really Amazing. cute. That would be such a fun decoration. Oh my gosh, I'll make one. All right, well, I think we're at time. That was a great episode. You are so funny. You're a thank talent. You. Um, thank you for your vulnerability. Of course. Yeah. yeah was, was it too amazing. much? God, no. Okay. Okay. That was amazing. I have okay. wept on this podcast. Okay, yes. great. great. I had like my breakup on this podcast. Oh, I like... Yeah, I've talked about not talking to my mom for a while on this podcast. This is definitely like the listeners so appreciate any vulnerability because my philosophy, I don't know what people think this podcast is, mm -hmm. but in addition to just being a funny comedy podcast where people can talk freely about sex, I think the thing that makes a podcast special is that I can't uh, speak to everyone's experience. So I love having guests that are mm -hmm. super open and super vulnerable because you're going to touch on something that I've never experienced before. And yeah. there are people at home listening that can identify with that. So I really appreciate it. All right. Should we do plugs? Guys, the tour is really big and I, I don't have time. So please just <laughs> sign up for my text or email alert on my website. It is international and um, patreon.com slash WHGS. It is the lifeblood of everything we do here. It is the most consistent, reliable thing to pay all of our employees, including Maddie. And uh, so, yeah, patreon.com slash WHS. You get bonus episodes for a month. That's that's kind of nuts, dude. Yeah. Whoa. Or a month. That's like a Sam's place. Club value. <laughs> <laughs> we are the the budget, uh, the budget mall podcast. That's what we are. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't find the words. All right. Anything you want to plug, Maddie? Uh, I'm on Instagram and on YouTube, Maddie T. Wiener. And I have my little my little zine on Substack. There's a free or paid version, but um, having a zine is gay. Gay, like that's gayer than I am. <laughs> yeah, my that imposter is. syndrome. Is I was like, that's <laughs> that's pretty gay. Yeah, a, a zine. It's really fun, and I really like it. And it's the link is in my everything's in my Instagram. Bio. You're 24, right? I'm 24. I feel mm -hmm. like I need to say that for people because I don't think people realize how young you are. You really are wise yeah. beyond your years. Do people not realize? Oh, I was going to say I have a tight little f but thank you. That is so <laughs> nice, too. No, we found out from the the uh, whimpering from the men in your life. Oh, my God. And Jess, what are you what are you working on? What do you want to plug? Um, I want to plug my monthly show at Union Hall. In every, Brooklyn. Um, in Brooklyn. Every first Saturday of every first Saturday of the month at 10 p.m. I've done it. It's a great show. Yeah, it's slumber party vibes. It's literally called slumber party. Um, and follow my Instagram. Embrace mess. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys. Have a good week.
Thanks for listening, guys. Great episode, right? I knew you'd like it. Patreon.com slash WHGS to get bonus episodes. Uncut, unfiltered episodes. We're doing two to four bonus episodes a month, depending on uh, what your tier is. So it's, it's, it's good. It helps us. And then, uh, tour. You know the whole thing. <laughs> can, you, can you just sign up for my email alert? I know about, I know how many of you are going to see this. Some of you are not on it. Some of you are lying, okay? Some of you are lying and you're not on the text alert and it would be really, really helpful to go to ashleygavin.com and sign up for either the email or the text alert. When I will text you when I'm in your city. Yada, yada. Okay, gay thought. And I definitely have one. Maddie, are you still here? Do you have any gay thoughts? How did the etymology of gay go from happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. So I don't know if you heard that, but Alex just said something very funny. Alex is a very talented comedian. Pay him. Patreon.com slash WHGS. How, what is the etymology of gay meaning happy and then transforming into meaning banging one of your own, which is a phrase that I will now carry into the rest of my life. It almost felt like you're not a homophobic person at all. You're like one of the least homophobic people I've ever met in my entire life. But that felt like someone who is homophobic trying to avoid saying something homophobic. <laughs> Oh, sure. Yeah. What's your homophobic gay thought? Um, this is a, this is like a group gay thought. My, okay. My, oh, my, my, uh, maybe homophobic gay thought, but this is just something that I g- genuinely pulled out of my notes app. I'll just read it verbatim. Being bisexual is weird because you have to be like, will men think it's hot that I'm gay? <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to be like, oh no, lesbians are not going to think it's hot that I'm straight. <laughs> I think it's hot. Bisexual, I think it's so hot that you're straight. Bisexual, you're straight, and I think it's hot. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. Don't cancel us. <laughs> <laughs>